Well, most of you are very aware of a war that has been declared in Israel and around Israel yesterday. This happened so suddenly. This morning I was watching YouTube, early, early morning, YouTube uh, reports, five minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes, those little things. And you have Netanyahu saying, we're this is war. This is not a, a conflict for a moment. This is a long-term intensified response. Not long, because they've had a few over the last 75 years of the seasons. It's very dangerous, but they do missiles back and forth, do, and then they quit after a couple of weeks. It's like, ugh. Like the Intifada. There's some of those happened in 2001, and, but they, they were temporary. He says, this will be prolonged and intense. Then they show the other guy in different uh, broadcasts. What is your response? He goes, we're going to show Israel we're here, and we mean it until it all changes. We're not backing down. We're intensifying. And, of course, the multi-leveled attack of Hamas, which is a terrorist organization. There's two terrorist organizations, Hamas and Hezbollah. And the Hamas has this coordinated five- or ten-prong attack, which means there's been months of training. And somebody, many are criticizing the Israeli intelligence. If they planned it that long, that carefully, on ten prongs, whatever the number is, how did you miss it? That's not my concern who missed it. My concern is that's how set that Hamas has been. And, of course, we know that it's Iran is the one behind it, the resource behind it, the inspiration behind it, and Hamas and Hezbollah, they're proxies for Iran. This is actually an attack of Iran, who's on the fast... What's that? So whispered at you, let me say something. Oh, this. yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to interrupt, but, <laughs> but just real quick. No, no, one, no. one study reported that since 2012... Iran has backed, I think it's Hamas or Hezbollah, I think it's Hezbollah, has funded them $700 million a year. So the, the, the funding of these terrorist organizations, the funding of these activities is all connected to Iran's wealth, which our U.S. government just recently released, I think, $6 billion in, in frozen assets. A week ago. A week ago. And then a week later, there are these uh, uh, terrorists that are actively going to war in Israel. And so this and is the all... complaint two years ago from the conservatives, if you release money to Iran, it's going straight to Hamas. Yeah. And no, they won't do it. Well, the money was released $6 billion and Hamas tacked today, but they've been planning it for a while because they knew the money was coming, undoubtedly. But I don't, I'm not trying to figure out who did it bad. I'm talking about the intentionality and the resolve. That's the part I'm locked in on. Let's look at Zechariah. I got three verses to look at. We'll look at them real brief. Make a few more comments and then pray. And by the way, uh, you can pray anytime you want at any one of our, prayer, of our intercessory prayer uh, meetings for Israel. No matter what other theme other people are talking about, you're always free to do this. I was at IHOP all day yesterday, and every prayer was for Israel. So they, no one need tipped off. <laughs> And we don't have to make everyone, but if they are, they are. This is really important. I want you to see the end game. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 1. Most of you are familiar with this. Zechariah 14, let's put it on the screen here. This is the Lord speaking. He says this. He goes, the day of the Lord is coming where I, the God of Israel. This is confusing at first. I will gather the nations to battle against Jerusalem. You will? Yeah, because many implications. That will be a context. I'll do many other things. That's not my point to go into that. Then we know Revelation 16, the, the Armageddon can, uh, passage, where Satan gathers all the kings to Israel. So who is it? It's both. Very different motives. Very different spirit behind it. Very different outcomes. The God knows this will be a context that will actually bring the salvation of Israel and even the transformation of the end-time church and a bunch of other things with an outpouring. That's too much information for, for right now. But my point is, this is where it's going. 
This surge of hostility, it might have a reprieve or two. Actually, it will. There will be a moment of peace that's still in the biblical uh, narrative. There will be a, a false peace in Israel for three and a half years, a couple years down, whenever it is. So it will look like the problem's going to get solved, but it's going to be a very temporary false peace. But that's, again, beyond really what, what we want to do today. But I want you to know the, the hostility is going to really escalate. Number two, look at Revelation 12. Revelation 12. Wait till they get it up there. Revelation 12 is not so familiar to everyone, but it needs to be. This is the passage, because it's got symbolic language, but the symbolism is made really clear. It's talking about a dragon and a woman. The dragon is clear, it says it, is the devil. The woman is clearly Israel. There's no question about it. Revelation 12 tells us Satan's rage against Israel is going to escalate beyond any time in history in the final years before the Lord returns. There's a raging escalation. Verse 7, here's the great pull back the veil we see behind the scenes. John sees this 2,000 years ago, this vision. A war broke out in the heavenly realm. Michael the archangel and all of his angels, if you read the whole text, fought against Satan called the dragon and all of Satan's demons that are in the atmosphere. In the heavenly places, the mid-heavens. The net result is that Michael cast down Satan to the earth. And all the demons cast down to the earth. It's verse 9. Then a loud voice declared in heaven. This is, read the whole thing, I don't have it here. This is the hour where the power of God is going to break forth in the earthly realm. Way beyond the book of Acts. Because Satan is cast down to the earth, but he's cast down as an accuser. And as an accuser, he's going to go attack Israel. A couple of really quick points. Number one, when Satan's cast down from the heavenly realm, he's, that's actually, he loses his position of advantage. He can hinder angels' involvement with the church by his position in the heavenly with demonic principalities that I believe are over every city and every nation. He loses his position of advantage by being cast down. That's why there's an open heaven over the church. And the glory of God comes on the church. This is yet future. This is the final three and a half years. But when Satan is cast down, we understand his most, his, his primary weapon is not murder. That's like his second weapon. His primary weapon is not murder. It's not even uh, uh, sexual perversion. That's one of his, his deals. Not even uh, just deception of doctrines, that is too. His primary weapon is accusation. This dragon breathing on the minds of people with supernatural ability to cause reasonable people to have really strange thoughts that he's inspired. He'll take even whispered innuendos and turn them into hostile accusations. Israel against Israel, church against church, family member against family member, Muslim against Muslim. At every level of society, he will show his most effective weapon is going to be openly seen. He's doing it now. The accuser, supernatural ability to get sound-minded people to buy into false narratives and be energized and attack each other. That's what he will do. And then he's going after Israel with that attack. One more passage. Daniel chapter 10. This passage I just read in Revelation 12, which you really want to get a little familiar with it. You don't have to be an expert, but get familiar with it. It's based on what happened in Daniel 12. In Daniel 12, Daniel the prophet, he's 84 years old. Jerusalem is in trouble. He sets his heart to fast and pray for a breakthrough of angels, angel activity, power of God, Holy Spirit, angel activity, all working together for Jerusalem. It's an 84-year-old man. He's praying one week, nothing happens. He's praying two weeks, nothing happens. Three weeks, nothing happens. And that surprises him because he's had a number of open visions and heavenly encounters. 
What's going on? Verse 12, this mighty angel appears to him on the 21st day. says, Daniel, from the very first day that you prayed, the Father commissioned me to come. I was sent to you, day one, like the other times you prayed and mighty angels appeared. But, he goes, your words were heard. I was sent. Verse 13, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia, he stood against me. Now, this is not talking about the earthly prince of Persia. This is talking about the demonic principality over Persia. I assume every nation, every major city, probably, every man, has a principal, demonic principality assigned to them to disrupt them in the unique way. Every city has a different assignment, demonic assignment, and every city has a different divine assignment. And there's angels assigned to every human being and angels assigned to every city. There's a war in the heavens. On day 21, this angel's trying to get through to Daniel, but this principality is actually mightier than the angel. And Daniel's praying, praying, praying. Finally, Michael, the archangel, the great warring angel for Israel, the most mighty angel, I assume, he comes, moves the demonic principality of Persia out of the way. So this other angel, very mighty angel, he comes to Daniel and says, Michael, because of your prayers, he got involved. That's why I broke through, and the demon was pushed back. He can't hinder me right now. Now, Persia, as you know, is modern-day Iran. And Daniel 10 was 2,500 years ago. Persia has only been a world power two times in 6,000 years of recorded human history. Two times. The generation of Daniel and right now. Two times only in 6,000 years of history. Iran is now a world power because of Russia and China. Without them, they wouldn't be. They'd be dangerous for sure. And now they have a nuclear weapon. There, there are a few dots connecting a few dots from it being activated because they get activated. Every, a bunch will know so they can activate it real soon. The nuclear weapon's there. And they said, we are going to destroy Israel with it. That's already in the rhetoric. But they're doing the Hamas, Hezbollah at proxies attacks right now. What happened in, in Isaiah 62 fast, May of this year, 21 days, Something remarkable happened. Five million Gentiles did the Daniel 10 thing. Daniel did it alone, as far as we know, 2,500 years ago, 5, 000, 5 million people. 12,000 ministries signed up, said, we will mobilize the people in our nation, in our language. 100, nation, 100 languages translated it into their language. 120 nations. We will mobilize for 21 days, an hour a day at least. Remarkable. So I asked the guys in Israel who know a lot, I said, has ever been a time where 10,000 Gentiles prayed for Israel for 10 straight days? Never. Not that we know of. I asked the prayer movement historians. There's some really smart guys that got all the data of the prayer movement through history. They go, nothing close. So I'm thinking, what is going to happen if 5 million do the Daniel thing? The principality is going to be disrupted. So in April, this is a few weeks before the fast starts, we're at the 1 million have said yes. I don't know it's going to go to 5 million, but at the 1 million, I talked to a number of leaders. I said, remember back in 1984, and I won't go into this story because many of you know it, some of you don't, it doesn't matter right now. When Michael the archangel made a momentary visit related to this movement here in Kansas City, and Michael the archangel revealed dragon as a black horse. And he said with his mouth, when you go to the east, he will strike you with the rage of Satan, this black horse will. That is so odd. And you could go to our website and check out uh, two or three titles that have black horse if you want to hear the story. That's not my point, to tell that story. But in April, I said, Five, a million intercessors, it became five million. We're going to the east. The rage of that accuser and that murderer, he's not only an accuser, he's a murderer. 
and he's perverse beyond anything we could imagine, and those other things too. So don't think it's only accusation. I said, after May, we're going to see the rage of Satan. I think it may be a couple years from now. I don't know. It's going to attack us. We've got a few incidences in history. It's going to attack the people who engaged in this in a real deep way. But there's an answer to the attack because the Lord will answer it. So we don't go, oh, no, attack, I quit. No, the Lord says, no, I'm going to answer. I got Michael on the other. I got the Holy Spirit on this thing. But it's going to attack the rage of Satan. It's going to attack Israel too. Alan Hood, and I'll be done with this, and then Isaac will make a few comments, made a comment some years ago. I'm not quoting it exactly right, but it was a new idea to me. Maybe it's 15 years ago. I don't remember. Alan Hood is one of my dearest friends, and I'm one of the best Bible teachers in the land, actually. And he said on this platform, he goes, something like this. I probably got it wrong. He said, we think that World War III will break out, and I think World War III is the is the in game of this before the counterfeit peace and safety settles it and then the antichrist empire after the counterfeit peace and safety so there's a couple stages in the biblical narrative but he said we, but the third world war is coming and i believe it's all connected to these kinds of things and he said we think the prayer movement will stop the third world war something like this i'm sir alan i'm gonna get it wrong the prayer movement is going to be part of the catalyst that causes the third world war like what? Because it will stir up angelic activity. It'll stir up agitation. That's the wrong word. And the mnemonic realm and the rage will increase. God has an answer for it. But the prayer actually releases these things as well as provides answers. So prayer does both. I thought, oh, wow, let me think on that. And, and that's too big of a statement to say so quick. But it does both. It releases the peace it releases the angels. It stirs up. It's catalytic to a conflict in the spirit realm. But we know at the end of the age, this thing is going to come to a full-blown explosion of Michael. Why is Michael going to cast Satan down? Not the principality of, of Iran. Satan, because there's a global prayer movement across the earth doing the Daniel 10 fast. <laughs> And they're doing it for Israel. We had a five million down payment. And this is not our final assignment or the biggest attack we're going to have, even though it may be a few years before we see that attack. There's, we got more assignments and more attacks. And so we're not concerned by the attacks. I don't like attacks. We're concerned with obedience. We want to be in that Daniel stage. Michael is thinking, I'm not doing it till I hear the prayers of Daniel, not just Daniel 10 prayers. I got to hear the prayers before the Father will release me at this level. That's the global end-time prayer movement, and that's what we're involved with thousands of other ministries for such a time as this. I'm thinking of when, when Daniel prays, it causes conflict to escalate in the heavens, and I think that's an important principle for us to understand is that through anointed prayer and intercession, there's the increase of conflict. It's not because we're praying or asking God for conflict. We're praying the apostolic prayers. The opposite. We're praying for peace. We're praying for mercy. We're praying for the relenting of harm. So don't get the idea that we're going to pray for more conflict to happen. But as we pray, conflict will happen. It's inevitable because heaven invades the earth. And whenever there's a collision of power in the supernatural realm, there is conflict that manifests on the earth. A lot of people, when you start praying for your marriage, this is a pastoral point, we start praying for your marriage, we start praying for family, conflict will increase first before it can be dealt with. And so I'm looking at, something is hitting me from Daniel 10, that as Daniel prays, Michael is, or Michael arises, and he's holding back the prince of Persia but there's going to be conflict between Persia and Babylon, or Persia and Babylon, but Persia and Greece in the days ahead, because he says in verse 20 that the prince of Greece is about to come. That's another demonic principality. And what's interesting is that between Persia and Greece, what happens in the earth is that the Lord establishes the house of prayer. He rebuilds the house of prayer. And I'm wondering that if in times of conflict like we're seeing and the rise of global conflict, that it's the Lord getting the attention of the body of Christ in intercession. It's how he wakes up his people. And the global permit goes to a whole nother level when there's conflict in the heavens and then conflict on the earth. 
So anyways. But help, I, help I, I don't want us to lose the point I didn't put up there. When Michael cast down Satan, the voice, and now the power of God and the salvation that's released across the earth, the saints that will operate in a spirit of power and revival so far beyond the book of Acts. They'll be doing the miracles of Moses in Exodus, the miracles of the book of Acts will be combined and multiplied. So this conflict is real, but the power surged. And even that short visitation that Michael had, very just a minute or two or three, whatever, not I could time it, but, but he shows that the God vindicates and releases power. So we're not looking going, oh, it's Satan raging. No, if we take a stand as the Lord's bond servant, Satan is going to rage, but power is going to answer the rage. Our point today, this is the one, then, then we'll just pray. We'll end with this. Our point today. Let's this, have the worship team come up. This worship team, yes, excellent. This is an hour to settle in our soul to go deep in God. We have to, this is like, well, I want to try to avoid this. No, there's no out. We want to be in, the, in a company, and there'll be thousands of them, not just here, that will have power because we're, we're leaning into it with Jesus into the battle. We're not retreating in fear. We're actually advancing knowing all the apostles knew most of them would get killed, actually. Jesus told them they would. And they ran into the battle because of the glory of God. And so this is an hour for us to say, you know, we got some unsettled issues here and there. Let's settle them. Let's determine together that we're going to run forward into the prayer movement. I don't mean everybody leaves their, their job and do the prayer movement. That, that's not what I'm talking about because there's a hundred ways to do prayer. But we're going to respond to one another in kingdom of God ways. We're going to use our money in kingdom of God ways. We're going to use our influence in kingdom of God ways, not semi-kingdom. We're going to new resolve for 100% faithfulness. Let's just stand before the Lord. And again, whenever we say that, you don't want to just stay seated. <laughs> We're just going to take a moment, and then we have prayer meetings all day today, all day tomorrow, all day the next day. <laughs> we got lots of time to do this. And by the way, we got lots of folks around the world that are doing the same thing here. Lots of ministries are doing this very thing today and this week and next week. But this thing's going to escalate to a huge global conflict, even though there might be a reprieve or two. Father, here we stand before you. I pray Psalm 102, verse 12. I say, arise, O God, and have mercy on the city of Jerusalem. Arise, that means God intervene in the earthly realm. That's what arise means when you pray it. Arise, intervene in the earthly realm, Abba, and have mercy on Jerusalem said in verse 16 you will appear in your glory to even unbelievers in Jerusalem and beyond I ask you to appear in your glory to Jewish people who do not know Yeshua appear in your glory to Arabs that don't know Yeshua to Muslims to the international community in the land for other reasons appear in your glory and God, we ask for miracles. We ask for peace. We ask for safety. We say, grace, grace. Grace, grace over all the ten, near 10 million, 9 million plus in Israel, Arabs, Jews, the international community, believers, unbelievers, perverted people, angry people, murderers people. Grace, appear in your mercy. Bring salvation to multitudes in Israel. And God, I ask you to touch the families today, this week, of the believers, the Arab believers, the Jewish believers, the international uh, ministries, those kids that are 10 and 12 and 14, 6 and 8, that are confused, bewildered, that are being persecuted by everyone around them for standing for Yeshua, their family. Visit those children, Lord, I ask. Cause this to be a week of visitation on lots of children of Messianic believers in the land. And we ask you in Jesus' name.